Hi everyone and welcome to yet another episode. This will be something totally different. I promised you to show off some games on the Amiga and the ABC80, but I couldn't resist. I got a parcel recently. You see, I have this Macintosh Plus up here. And it didn't work and I didn't have a keyboard for it, I didn't have a mouse for it. Unlike the Macintosh Classic, the SC30, the LC and so on, uh, the Plus and the older Macintosh such as the 128K or the 512K in KE, it uses a, pro uh, a special uh, RG45 type of connector for the keyboard and a D sub for the mouse. So it's uh, it's not the ADB type. But however, I recently got this. This is the original keyboard that is supposed to uh, be together with the Macintosh Plus. And you see it's a very special connector in the back. I also got this mouse and you see the D sub here, it's not like the ADB uh, on the later models. So of course I couldn't resist starting the Mac and but unfortunately there was a problem with the power supply. Uh, there was some problem with the sweep uh, because the image was too stretched and however I adjusted it I couldn't the lines were too far apart. So I suspected there was something wrong with the voltage to the deflector coils. And upon investigating further, I noticed that lots of the capacitors has failed. This is the analog board and the power supply uh, all in one from the Macintosh Plus. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to recap it. I ordered uh, new capacitors. The problem was for this C1, it's a non-polar electrolytic capacitors. I've never heard of such a thing. However, I saw a, an episode of 8-bit guy when he repaired one of these power supplies and he replaced it with a ceramic capacitor, so I'm going to do the same. And the rest of them are just normal polarized electrolytic capacitors that uh, a true hole mounted. So let's get cracking and then uh, see how it goes. So what I did prior to removing all the capacitors of this board is I made a list on my computer with all the values and all the maximum uh, rated voltages for each capacitor uh, of, the electro of the electrolytic ones and the true hole mounted ones. I'm not going to replace the ceramic capacitors because I think they are fine. Uh, and there's a little plastic capacitors in, capacitor in here as well. And I'm not going to replace that one either. And more of the plastic ones here. Uh, just the electrolytic ones. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. I had to wait some time for all the orders to arrive, but now they are finally here. I have lots and lots and lots of packages and uh, I have more capacitors than I will ever need. I can probably make a kit for you if you plan of planning on um, repairing one of these uh, original boards. Because I have more than I ever need. One cool thing that I noticed about this board, however, is this. It says, uh, uh, if it can focus, here, copyright 1983. But the Macintosh didn't exist in 83, it came in 84, right? So this is an original board, and the design was made in 83 for release in January 84. So this is the first generation power supply for the Macintosh. Even though the Macintosh Plus came in uh, 86, two years after 
the original Macintosh, they still use the same power supply and the st same um, sweep circuits uh, and uh, picture circuitry as the original Macintosh. So yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. <laughs> 1983. I'm a really big fan of using flux gel because I think it makes everything so much easier. I'm gonna start with C2. Uh, I will save C1 until the last because that's the strangest one. So I'm gonna start by removing C2. And it's these two. I guess most of you guys already know how to solder, so I will just do this on one and then I will fast forward. So what I usually do is I put some flux on it. I have this solder tin holder, it looks like a pen, it's really convenient. And I add some extra tin to it because then it conducts heat better. Just because the old tin doesn't always melt and, well, it's just for heat conductivity really. And now I have two choices. Either I can use this tin suction thing. Uh, I used this lot a lot before, but I prefer to not use it so much anymore because I have experienced that sometimes the drag from the sec suction is so great that the soldering pad can come flying off. So I prefer a more gentle method using soldering wick instead. And it sucks, sucks the tin right up. Uh, I'm sorry I cannot get a close-up but yeah that's how it is. There are lots of soldering videos out there on YouTube. Just look them up. Alright, now all the tin has been sucked up, so I should just be able to remove this. I need to bend up the tins. Hmm. I need a little screwdriver to bend them up. Ideally this shouldn't be needed, but these were really hard for some reason. And they get stuck. And you have to be careful here also to not damage the solder pads. Let's see. Yeah, there's a bit more tin to be sucked up here. Ah, and there's <laughs> hot glue here as well. I love this. This is what Apple used to do on a lot of their products. 
Uh, now it's free from the back side. It's just the uh, hot glue. Ah, there it is. And the soda pads seems to be fine. I haven't damaged them. Um, I was afraid that I would damage them if I used uh, this suction thing. So I'm just gonna do... Um, you know what? I will replace this and before I remove the next one because otherwise I will confuse everything. So this is uh, 4700 um, microfarad and it's rated at uh, 16 volt uh, breakdown voltage. So uh, this is this is the one. The first bag I picked up. And this has a rated breakdown voltage of 25 volts and it's the same yeah 4700 microfarads let's see then there is a little plus here and on this one it's a minus so it's all backwards but the longer leg is the plus and once again I'm sure you guys already know all this I don't know who I'm talking to. Plus is there. Yep. Seems fine. Then I just gonna put it back. I really like this pen style uh, saw the holder. And I, the reason I'm not putting any flux now is because I just removed the old solder, so I'm sure it's already clean of oxide, uh, oxides. So, normally if I put new components on a PCB, I would put some flux, but I'm sure it's not necessary now since it just was cleaned half a minute ago. And these are quite big components, so they need a lot of uh, solder. Right. Looks good to me. Just need some alcohol to clean it off. Let's snip this. Snippity snip and snippity snip. Right. So uh, what I'm gonna do now? So I don't want to remove this again, and I don't want. They look exactly the same. I cannot tell the new one from the old one, uh, except this one has glue on it. So what I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna put a note in my. Um, list C2 and I will make a new column here just putting an X means it's done yeah so that's the first one uh, I will replace all the other ones uh, off camera and uh, I'll be back then All right, so I've done a few things now. I finished replacing all the capacitors, all the electrolytic ones. And I also noticed that the uh, solder pad for one of the capacitors was gone. Maybe that's what caused the problem in the first time, maybe not. But I ran a jumper from that capacitor to a connection point that connects to the same um, the same trace. I also cleaned it uh, because it was uh, full of flus uh, when I was done with it. So I cleaned it with uh, isopropyl alcohol. 
So just, uh, we just need to put it in and see if it works. This is the plus that I'm uh, gonna put it in. So let's take it apart. On the back side there are five screws, five Torx screws. One is behind this little battery compartment. One here. And I believe this is, um, let me check the size, T15 or T10, I guess. That's one. Two. Ah, three. And up here are the most annoying ones because you need a really long screwdriver to reach them. Let's see if it comes out. Yep, it's the fourth screw and mm. well, I never said this was easy. I'm just going to put it in my lap instead. <laughs> comes out the fifth and final screw no yep there it came so now let's lift it up Here it is. If you wonder what this copper thing is, uh, it's an add-on that was sold later to uh, some Macintosh models to decrease the uh, electromagnetic radiation emitted from it. I don't think it's really necessary, but people were afraid of electromagnetic radiation back in the days. I also really like this, all the signatures of the Macintosh team inside here. You can see Steve Jobs signature up here, but most importantly, in my opinion, is Steve Wozniak's signature here, Woz. The most competent IT guru I have known. <laughs> Anyway, now that we are going to put this in, uh, the best thing would be to measure all the output voltages of these pins, because the, these pins goes to the logic board. And it should be 5 volts and 12 volts as, and ground and some negative voltages as well. Uh, but I don't feel like sitting here and measuring voltages i just gonna plug this all in and if it blows it blows let's see so first i need to take this screw away uh, 
and here are the cables for the deflector coil that uh, tells this coil where to send the scanning beam and here are the cables for the uh, cathode heater and uh, some uh, cathode em emission as well and a ground wire and then we have this for the anode and this uh, comes from the flyback transformer here and according to the schematic it should be 13 kilovolts or 13,000 volts so this is something you really don't want to touch when it's live I have never tried to measure it because I don't have a multimeter that goes that high so this one should just be put in this way uh, and it needs a little plastic knob as well. This little plastic knob here goes on the potentiometer in the corner and the purpose of this knob is to adjust the brightness of the screen. So now comes a really fiddly part to try to make everything fit in here. So let's see, I should just put it like this and the knob should come down there, yep. And uh, am I missing something? No, it should be like that. Oh, the knob is not the right position well this is easier said than done I can tell you that much now I think the knob came to the right position almost did it no it didn't Ah, yes. Now the knob is down in the right position and this one is right. Yep. There should be a screw in here on the side. Oh, I forgot to take out the screws before. Oh well. There are two screws here that I need to remove. Okay, now I need to do this all over again. So, let's see, this one goes there. And this little knob goes in there. And yeah, it seems all right. This little foil goes here. And one screw goes here. One screw goes here. Ah, yes, that's correct. And that's correct as well. And one little screw goes down here into that hole. Then it came with this one, which should be here, just to warn everyone that this is high voltage and you should not touch it. Uh, but I will attach it after testing because I don't know if it works or not. So 
However, there is a ground wire up here. If I tilt this. So this is a ground wire that comes from the ground pin in the power input. And it should go to the ground of the chassis like this. And there's a little screw here for that. So I'm just gonna put this here. Yes. And it is ready for testing. I think that the floppy drive works. Um, since the picture didn't work on this machine, I haven't really tested the floppy, but it made the right sound and it looked like it was reading um, and I think the analog board is working as well because it doesn't look damaged so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect the power to this and switch it on just to see if anything smokes uh, and if it seems all right then I will connect this cable here for the analog board I need however to connect this high voltage cable first because I don't want to leave this hanging. So this needs to be connected at least. It's a little clip that you do like this. Yeah. And um, I don't know about the deflector coil control cables. I think I will connect them later as well. So I will just find a power cord and then we can try. All right, here goes nothing. This is in position zero. So nothing should happen when I put this in, hopefully. Yep, no sound, no smoking. Then I just try this. It sounds good. The sound you are hearing, uh, it sounds like a bird singing. It's the high voltage uh, discharging to the screen. So that's a normal um, sound when the analog board is not connected. And, uh, so yeah, uh, I will uh, remove this and I will connect this one. really carefully without giving myself a shock which I just did and this one for the analog board should be connected come in oh, man this is tight Yep, connected. And this one. Yep. Okay, let's put this in again. And try it. And now it should not make that sound. Mm -hmm. Huh. So, something else is wrong with this computer. I need to troubleshoot it some more. What can it be? Hmm. Everything is connected properly. I should probably measure the voltages. <sighs> yeah, let me go to my multimeter. So I got my multimeter here and I got the circuit diagram here and to the analog board that is the J4 clip on number 6 
it should be plus 5 volt and on the return is that's uh, number 9 uh, and if I'm not mistaken they start counting inwards so number 6 uh, should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 the blue cable there should be number 6 I will try to get the probe in here uh, yeah. uh, that's 1, 2, one, two 3, 4, 5, six. number 6 is there or maybe they start numbering from the other way. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. And on, uh, no, number nine should be return. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one. Yes. And number six should be plus 5 volt so that's 1 2 3 4 5 number 6 is there yep and then this one needs to be here as well otherwise it will not work uh, this is really why they call it compact mac because they are really compact to work with oh. That will have to do. And this one. And this one as well. And measure voltage. All right, let's try. Uh, this time I will try to not touch. Whoops. This time I will try to not touch anything uh, because I got a shock already. Well, it's saying. Uh, it's saying a lot of things. I think I started. The numbering scheme probably starts from the other end. So let's try shifting these around them. So if it starts from the outside, then number nine is. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine that one yeah that makes sense and number six is one two three four five six uh, yep let's try this instead Here we go. Mm, something is definitely wrong because now it's barely measuring any voltage at all. Yeah, this is not good. What can be the problem then? Hmm. I will uh, consult the schematics a bit and uh, I'll be back. So uh, I've been consulting uh, the dead max scrolls here on my computer, uh, which is a fantastic handbook. If you ever need to repair a vintage Macintosh, you should have the dead max scrolls. And it suggested two things. 
first of all, it said that it's making that sound, that pew pew sound, and it doesn't show an image if the video cable between the analog board and the digital board, logic board, is not connected. And it's this one. And it wasn't connected when I first tried it, and that's what I said, it's making that sound when it's not connected. The second thing uh, the Dead Scroll, uh, the Dead Max Scroll mentioned is that when you replace all the capacitors, as I did, you need to uh, adjust the voltage again, because everything changes. So there is a little variable resistor here, and you turn it all the way back, and then you slowly bring it up to voltage. So let's bring it back all the way. I need a smaller screwdriver. Ah, I think this will do. All the way back. Yep. Like that. Uh, and then I need to measure at the same time. But I'm just gonna plug in the cable now when it's at the lowest setting and see if anything happens. And slowly bring it up. So let's see, and now I should be very careful to not touch the back side here. Still making that sound. Maybe this is the way back. Well, it's slower. Hmm. I think the voltage is so much out of adjustment that this won't do it. So I need to measure on the, it mentioned here, the blue wire, uh, which page was it? Here, yes. Um, hmm. Turn variable resistor R56 labeled voltage fully counterclockwise. Yeah, counterclockwise. Uh, it's uh, this one. Now it's fully counterclockwise. Uh, R. 56. Oh, I cannot see the label. 59. 56. Yeah, it's 56. <laughs> if I put this on, it should be labeled voltage. Yeah, here, voltage. That one, height. Focus, cut off. Yeah. This is voltage definitely. And it's fully counterclockwise. Restart the computer and adjust R56 for 5 volt DC measured from pin 6 of the power supply cable to chassis ground. Uh, okay. And pin number six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It should be the blue wire. So let's double check that. This is called J4. Hmm. Ah, it's also mentioned here that the power, due to the lack of fan in the design, uh, the power supply can slowly cook itself into oblivion. 
uh, the cooking can result in the failure of individual component and it can also accelerate the oxidation of various connectors resulting in flaky behavior. A not uncommon problem is spontaneous or periodic reset. First eliminate one simple cause. Check to see if your Mac has the reset interrupt button plastic gizmo installed on the side of the Mac. If so, verify that it hasn't got stuck in the reset position. Well, that's not the problem. Um... Well, I'm not sure. How do I get my measuring probes in there? They are too fat. Fifth one here should be five volts. Yeah, let's try this. Uh, this is it's going up and down. This is not good. It's going up and down the voltage. It's showing 2 volts and then it's showing 0.1 volts and then 3 volts and... Uh, something is terribly wrong. Hmm. It might be the capacitor C1 that I couldn't replace it with that one but that's what all the experts say that I can replace it with a, a ceramic one hmm should I put back the old one it, uh, it hasn't leaked but on the other hand this is this is what people say fails the most this capacitor and it's so strange that it's a non-polar electrolytic capacitor and you cannot buy that anywhere hmm I will uh, ask around in some Facebook groups that I'm part of and uh, see if I can get any help from somewhere and uh, then uh, I will be back. So, uh, it's a brand new day. Uh, I didn't get any answer or I didn't ask any questions in any of the Facebook groups uh, where I'm a member. But I found another document and that too states that it's probably the cable between the analog board and the, the uh, logic board that is the culprit here. So what I did, I removed it from both ends and measured the continuity for each of the cables and it all worked out fine so there wasn't any problem with the cable itself then I reinserted the cable in the analog board and in the logic board and I tried turning it on and I put the potentiometer for uh, the 5 volt adjustment in the bottom and it started so probably there were just some oxygen forming on the contacts um, between the cable and the board. So just uh, the action of removing the cable and putting it back solved the problem. 
simple as that. Uh, I measure the voltage uh, on the floppy port and with the potentiometer in the bottom that is clockwise clockwise is the lower setting it measured 5.5 volts I couldn't get it to 5 volts uh, but I figure 5.5 is close enough and the 12 volt was 12.5 uh, 13 in some cases um, so yeah that's fine as you can see here it's a very uh, narrow screen uh, but it's booting the floppy drive uh, made uh, some noise and now I can uh, see the desktop uh, although it's very narrow so I need to adjust it to make it bigger like so The problem now is that it's slightly out of focus, it's a blurry image and uh, it's wobbly. It's uh, like a flag going <laughs> like so back and forth. So I will once again uh, consult the dead max scrolls and see what I can do about the focus and uh, about the wobbly image. But I think it's starting to come alive. So that's really nice. So, according to the dead max scrolls here, uh, bad grounding on the grounding plate here in the corner can make the screen wiggle like this. So, I took some electronic cleaner and some tissue and I cleaned it. And I hope this will help. Uh, regarding the focus, there is a focus screw up here to, to adjust the focus. Okay, let's put the grounding plate back there and I'm gonna clean inside the screw holes as well and clean the screws because I want really good contact with the grounding plate now. The dead max scrolls also suggested tightening the grounding screws so I'm gonna make sure that they are nice and tight. Uh, without destroying them. All right, let's see. And uh, the screw for the focus is uh, labeled here on this vinyl sheet uh, as well as the cutoff and height and width so it's this hole here I should adjust for the focus all right let's keep our fingers crossed Well, it wiggles less than before, I think. But there are also some lines. Oh well. Let's try adjust the focus anyway. Yep. 
if there is something to focus. Yeah, here it is. Oh, now it doesn't wiggle at all. That's nice. Let's try to adjust this then. Ah, I see, I see. This is, this is cut off. Uh, this is focus right here. Uh, blurry, blurry. I think that's the sharpest it's gonna be, yeah. And let's make it a little bit wider. If I can. No, maybe I can't. Oh well. Uh, let it be then. Is it this one that has gone bad? Is that why it wiggles? Hmm. Oh, that's narrower. little bit wider no it still wiggles around um, but not as much as before I think it's usable it's not very it's not very nice to look at but it's usable and I think it might well let's put it together and try it out and uh, let's see if it disappears by itself when the cover is on uh, maybe some of these cover screws are used for grounding as well so maybe it becomes better uh, yeah like that and I also saw in the repair guide that this sticker here uh, the original placement for the sticker is here when you stick it but it's a very bad spot for it because there are some uh, sensitive components there so they the repair guide recommended moving this and let's see if I can do that without damaging it they recommended to put it over here instead. Oh, no. That didn't work. Well, I will just... I think I can live without a sticker there. And it will hold just these two. Yeah. Two stickers is enough. Because anyway, I might open this again to investigate this wiggling problem. So I don't want to have too many uh, adhesives on it. And I think that's just fine there. Yep. Whoops. Where is it? It's there. It doesn't stick. Oh, maybe I have to live without this one then, but I want it to be here. Where is it? It doesn't stick at all. I have to use some other kind of adhesives. Hmm. This is no fun. No, it doesn't stick. It sticks to my finger, but not to the board.
Maybe if I put it around the edges instead. Uh, in later models, in the classic and the SC and SC30 and so on, there are these holes here are used to hold this, but not in this earlier Max. There are four holes here to hold it in place. Maybe I can use those instead, even though it's not original. It was only used in the later models. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I will try putting some adhesives uh, up here on the edge instead. But this is, yeah, it's not a very good material to put things in. Or maybe I can just use tape here on the edge. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll just put tape here. Yeah, tape it is. Now I need to find tape. So I find uh, I have found this uh, electrically isolated uh, tape here, isolating tape, and I put uh, four little strips here around it uh, to keep it in place. And that way uh, the sticker, so the adhesive doesn't touch any traces and doesn't touch any solder. So I figure this is better anyway. Uh, it doesn't look as good, but the cover is going to be on anyway. Regarding this isolating thing, uh, I have been thinking, should I let it be or should I put it back? But I think it's a nice addition, so I'm going to put it back like it was. So, and since this is made from copper, I have to make absolutely sure this is not touching anything important. When this vinyl sheet is here, this white vinyl sheet, it doesn't touch any traces, it doesn't touch any solder. There's a paper uh, here on the logic board as well, so it doesn't touch any solder or any traces on that one. It covers up the speaker a little bit, but I don't mind. Um, it doesn't touch anything here, no wires, nothing. Uh, and when I took this apart, I found this one as well. And I think this is a wire for holding up this part, but I can't really figure out how to put it. Uh, I figured it should be here, but yeah, maybe just to hold it up. Um, well, this is this is obviously not made by Apple, so I'm gonna put it here. Ah. It actually fits here. So I think it's gonna be like this. Yeah, let's put the cover on. So easy does it. Uh, there is Something. Hmm. Something in the way somewhere. Uh, does it fit here? Yeah. Does it fit here? Yeah. Uh, You know what, I'm just gonna take this out. Uh, this was not installed in the 
this was not installed in the original Max and I don't think that the electromagnetic radiation will harm me. Especially since I won't be sitting eight hours a day by this computer. Yeah, this looks better and it feels better with the cover. Yeah, it fits right on. Um, where did I put my torque screwdriver? Oh, there it is. There's a sticker here, uh, and it says "On bild för reducerad bildskärmstrålning" or um, "Rebuilt for reduced um, picture tube radiation." So, since that is no longer there, I'm just gonna remove it. This little lid should be on here, and this one. These two screws just next to the handle are the most difficult one, in my opinion. And my torque screwdriver is not nearly long enough to... I, I really need a longer one. Oh no, it went the wrong side down. Oh. It went with it head first down the hole. All right, carefully this way down. Yep. All right, so what do we need now? We need a keyboard and a mouse. Here is the keyboard. Here is the keyboard cable. It looks like a telephone cord, but it's not. Uh, if you replace this with a normal telephone cord, you will fry the keyboard or fry the computer or fry both. Because um, it needs to uh, connect the polarity in the right way between ground and plus five volts. And if you put a telephone cord in, it will be switched. So it will put five volts into ground and ground into five volts and everything will just, it will run everything in reverse and fry it. So make sure to have the proper cable. And it goes here and this one goes here in the back, like so. And then this little mouse with a thumb goes in the back. As I said earlier, this was the time before the Apple desktop bus. Uh, the model after this, the SE, uh, that computer has the Apple desktop bus um, keyboard and mouse. So it's easier to find the hardware for that. All right. <sighs> Cross our fingers. All right, here goes nothing. It's starting, it made a wrong sound. Oh, and it comes on. Yeah, it still wiggles. But it seems to settle down after some time. Yeah, let's see. It should start reading the floppy by now. Yes, it did. And it's a happy Mac. Oh, this is so exciting.
and it oh, it wiggles a little bit and then it stops wiggle and then it start wiggles again so something is obviously wrong but I can use it huh desk accessories and the Macintosh Plus didn't come with any uh, hard disk drive. It was the SE that uh, came with hard disk drive. So here I just... Oh, it stopped wiggling. <laughs> How do I quit this? Oh, quit. It's not the most ergonomical mouse, uh, I have to admit. It's very bad um, to use but yeah now I just need software for this so the way you work this computer is you start it up with a boot disk like this and then you eject it and once ejected you can insert a new disk with uh, your uh, writing software or image software or whatever you need so yeah, that's it. And uh, that's it for this uh, episode as well. Um, this was meant to be a repair episode and now this computer is repaired and restored. Uh, I'm not going to retrobrite it because it's matching the keyboard already. Uh, maybe the keyboard is a little bit whiter, but I like the color of this plus. Um, this one is a little bit yellow, but... I don't mind that either. It's not too bad. It's not extremely yellow. So I'm not going to retrobrite it. Uh, I'm just going to use it from now on. And uh, try to find software for it. So yeah. Uh, thanks for this episode. And don't forget to subscribe and like. If you like this video. I also have a Facebook page that you can follow. And an Instagram account. Where I put up more content and uh, well in between pictures between the episodes that i publish here on youtube so don't forget to check those out so thank you very much bye